Okay. Good evening and welcome to the November 18th, 2021 meeting of the Cohasset Conservation Commission. Um, we'll be operating tonight's meeting using a Zoom platform. We ask the public who wish to speak to enter their questions or concerns or comments in the chat box. Please include your name and address. Only those who include their name or address will be recognized. Present this evening on behalf of the Conservation Commission is the town conservation agent, Charlotte Pachel. I'll now take a roll call of commissioners and associate commissioners. Please respond by repeating your name and saying present. Um, Tom Bell. Tom Bell, present. Kathy Berrigan. Kathy Berrigan, present. Uh, Eric Eisenhower, not present. Trish Grady, not present. Jay Pampari. Jay Pampari, present. Jay Pampari, present. Chris McFarland, present. And Chris McIntyre, our associate commissioner. Chris McIntyre, present. Great. So we have a quorum of four commissioners tonight. We'll be taking all votes via roll call with each commissioner answering yay, nay, or abstain. Um, since uh, Hobart Lane was, uh, I guess I'll just announce that NOI 21-26 for 12 Hobart Lane was continued until our next hearing, which will be November, December. It's like, is it December 2nd? Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. December 2nd, um, that was the applicant's request. Our second order of um, to, to deal with this evening is an amended order of condition NOI 21-17 for 502 North Main Street. Um, Charlotte, if you would. Oh, Mr. Powers, okay. Mr. Powers, is there anyone else in the uh, audience who you'd like to speak during this hearing? Um, I don't think so, not that I'm planning on. Okay, very good. Well, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So again, my name is Tim Power with PVI Site Design, uh, civil engineer representing the owners uh, at 502 North Main Street, or the owner, I should say. Uh, so this is uh, a request for an amended uh, notice of intent um, back in the uh, spring. Uh, we had submitted a notice of intent for construction of the two houses uh, with associated septic systems to, for which an order was issued. Uh, this amended order really just addresses the need for a, 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 a well, uh, which we've located just about on the 50 foot uh, no disturb buffer, maybe just a couple feet uh, outside of it. Uh, the reason being <clears throat> um, the setbacks required for a, a drinking well from septic and the houses and the property line sort of leaves us with a very small area right in that uh, corner where we've shown it on the drawings. So in discussions with Charlotte, uh, we, she felt it was just a little more than minor and we should submit this, um, uh, this as an amended order of conditions. Uh, and, um, I'm happy to talk about any other details of that. It is, like, like I said, it is a groundwater drinking well. Uh, the Board of Health has granted us a variance. Their setbacks are typically 100 feet from the wetlands, uh, but they understood the situation and the challenges of the site. So on Tuesday, they granted a, a, a variance for um, yeah. that setback. Sorry. Mr. Power, do you, have a, do you have a plan you can share with us quickly? I do. Or Charlotte? I have one I can throw up there quickly. And I will uh, circle the well. Okay. That's the proposed well location. 
And I think graphically we showed the hay bales pushed out over the buffer, but in reality, they've set those hay bales already today. So we'll, we'll work just inside um, that buffer. They've set the hay bales on the 50 foot buffer. Okay. Uh, as shown in the approved drawing. Just and, then, and there's there's no reason to go into the 50 foot buffer to drill this well, correct? Nope, they can set up um, all outside of the buffer. Um, they can drill, you know, with within a couple feet of the buffer line where the erosion controls are set today. Um, you know, if there is any discharge of water uh, under existing conditions, the area is relatively flat, so they can just direct that, you know, back towards the site uh, as best they can. So it hits the um, erosion controls before discharging overland. Okay. Commissioners, agent, does anyone have any questions or comments? Uh, yeah, how deep is the well going to be? Um, I don't know exactly. My understanding from the well drillers is they sort of they uh, they know when they hit water. It's anticipated to be a deep well, a modern well. So we're, we're talking in the range of a hundred feet or more, maybe a little less, but it depends on when they hit the aquifer. So uh, certainly not a shallow well that's impacting the the um, the water from the wetland system itself. We're going deep to the aquifer. And um, what sort of drilling fluids are they going to use? Drilling fluids? Yeah. Additives? Um, I guess I don't know that answer off the, off the top of my head. I mean, you're right on the 50 foot buffer there. And so I think we should be concerned about what um, additives they're using in their drilling fluid. And um, also controlling where that water's going. Uh, are they gonna dig a mud pit there or do they have a portable mud pit or what's the story here? Um, we, certainly, we certainly can dig a pit uh, from behind, uh, you know, from where the well needs to go and back into the site uh, for the mud pit and extend it further as needed. So it stays with it, you know, outside the 50 foot buffer. Do you have a plan for that mud pit? Uh, I don't. It's something we certainly can provide or follow up with, but the intent is we can go, you know, backwards. Okay. Well, typically, this I would assume this would be a two-chambered pit, probably fifteen to thirty feet long, eight or ten feet deep uh, in both chambers. I'd like to see a I'd like to see a plan for this. I'd like to see a list of. Uh, potential additives here, whether they're using uh, organic additives or just bentonite or what exactly they're going to do here. If it weren't so close to the buffer, I don't think I'd be so concerned, but you're, you know, you're right on it here. Sure. I, I, we're open to, um, you know, conditions of using additives that are, that are acceptable um, as well. If there's any, any that are concerned, I well, don't quite I, know enough of, of the drilling. The driller's got to use what he's got to use. We just, we just like to see what that list is. Sure. So Tom, is, it, is, it, is this something that we should uh, review prior to, to voting on this application? Well, it really depends on, on how big a mud pit they're going to. I mean, mud pits can be pretty big. Mm -hmm. He's going to go over 100 feet. Um, he's going to have a fairly substantial mud pit. Now, if they have a portable mud pit or a recirculation system uh, that's that's sitting on surface and contained, that's one thing. But if they really do have to dig a pit here, uh, that's something else altogether. And when you're running a mud pit in bare earth, of course, there is leakage, and um, it's, it's not just a matter of runoff here. Hopefully they keep their drilling fluids contained to the pit, but nevertheless, there's, um, there's leakage of their drilling fluids into the groundwater here. So it would be, uh, I mean, if, if uh, we could be assured that, yeah, they're gonna use a portable mud pit and then not gonna, not gonna dig a pit and call it a portable mud, mud pit, but it's actually just a steel container that that uh, they use to um, contain their fluids and they circulate out of the well bore 
into that pit and back down the, the drill stem. So that's my concern is that, you know, if you're, you've got an open mud pit here, you're gonna be leaking uh, whatever, uh, they're gonna use water presumably as the, as the um, uh, main part of the fluid, but they're gonna also add things to thicken it to um, condition that uh, drilling fluid so that the drill bit operates properly. So without, without seeing anything about this or without uh, Mr. Power knowing pretty much about this, uh, I, I'd say I'd wanna see more about this. So um, part of my concern is that the, uh, you know, the owner and this the decision here uh, sort of determines whether or not, you know, water is granted to the site. So um, what I was hoping to get was an approval and I'm happy to have conditions or even request to come back before um, a final building permit is approved on the, the proceed methods, means and methods of how they do this. Uh, it's just that to keep it open, uh, the bank and other parties involved in here as reported by my client are, are, are are hesitant to move forward. We don't have a drill contractor signed up yet, again, because it wasn't entirely approved. Um, so the, the owner didn't wanna bring someone on. Um, so again, we're happy to sort of uh, come back in with the driller themselves, sort of talk about the means and methods uh, as a condition of approval before any work starts, um, if that's of a benefit, because we, we wanna make sure we do it right. But at the same time, we're sort of stuck in that the owner can't move forward. Um, until the conservation signs off on the, um, the location uh, is really what's what's um, the concern, right? The means and methods is something I think we can work around uh, and work with the commission on. Tom, do you think this is something that we could uh, approve for location and 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 conceptually, and then have it conditioned that? Um, the, the additives and the mud pit would need to be reviewed with yourself and, and Charlotte um, prior to any, prior to beginning of any work? Yeah, I think so. Okay. That would be great. I really appreciate that. Jay, Kathy, do, do you have any comments? I, it makes sense to me to do that. Okay. I would go with that. Any uh, any other comments? Comments from the you can see the participants here. Do we have any com comments in the chat? No, we don't. Um, unless anyone else has any comments, I'll entertain an, a uh, motion. I'll, uh, I'll let Tom make the motion here. He was running with it. If he wants to make a motion, that would have to, it would basically we would be a, a, well, I'll make the motion and Tom, you can add the specific conditions if that's what we're going to do here. Sure. I'll, uh, Jay Papra, make a motion to amend the existing order of conditions uh, dated or the for the site plan of um, notice of intent 20-17 for 502 North Main Street with sorry. the, excuse me? 21-17. 41 dash 19. For the 17. 17. 17. 17. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 17. And I'll let uh, Tom Bell add some special conditions to that motion. Yeah, uh, I'd like to add the condition that uh, the drilling system be approved by uh, in, in the sense that uh, we're I, again, my main concern is that we've got a, uh, drilling fluids that have the potential to leak into the unsaturated zone here. And uh, again, if, if they have to dig a mud pit, that's, that's impossible. They can't really accomplish that. And so um, they either have to line their pit with something that's not going to leak or use a... Um, truck mounted or whatever, a trailer mounted uh, steel mud pit or mud containment system. 
All right, so how about if we do, I revise that uh, and not to take the words out of your mouth here, but the applicant as a special condition will come up with an operation and maintenance plan to address the yeah. uh, water as a result of drilling and the O&M plan must be acceptable to the Conservation Commission agent. Yeah, that sounds good. Do I hear a second? I'll second it. Having heard a motion in a second to issue a amended order of conditions for NOI 21-17 at 502 North Main Street, take a roll call vote. Um, Tom Bell? Tom Bell, aye. Kathy Berrigan? Kathy Berrigan, aye. Jay Pompari? Jay Pompari, aye. Chris McFarland, aye. That vote passes 4-0-0. Thank you very much, everyone, for your time. I really appreciate you um, being flexible on this, and we'll follow up with Charlotte as soon as we have a, uh, a driller and um, how they're going to approach it. That'd be great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, our next uh, item this evening is a uh, is a stormwater permit 21-37, which is a Category 1 administrative stormwater permit for 258 North Main Street, no hearing is required. Charlotte, you wanna just give us a little background on this? Yeah, so essentially what they're doing is it's a raise and reconstruct project. And if anyone knows uh, the, the project location, it's the house in the front. It, that house in the front was originally called 256 North Main, but um, there's a house behind it now. And that house determined by the assessors, the one in the back will be 256. Just wanted to clarify the address. Um, and the uh, engineer provided an updated site plan um, clarified a lot of the um, the grading and the drywall system um, and I uh, did send it around to everyone. I'm not sure if anyone had questions, but I had no further questions upon the revised site plan. And we also got a revised stormwater application with revised calculations and everything based off of the changes made to the site plan. Um, these were received um, and they're put in OneDrive. Um, so the deadline to issue an administrative approval is November 30th. Um, so if there are no questions or concerns from conservation. Um, just let me know. Did it, did, has ever, anyone had a chance to look at this and does anyone have any concerns? I don't have any further comment. I think we'd, I expressed some comments earlier uh, a month or so ago to this application, nothing further to add. I, I also made some comments. Tom mm -hmm. or Kathy, did, did either of you have any comments? No, I looked at it. I, I don't have any comments. So do we do we need to take a vote on this or we just. We do not need to take a vote. We, um, this can be done under administrative approval, uh, but I think we all appreciate the, the heads up and uh, the time uh, to review the application within the 21 day time frame. So we do not, not need a formal vote on it. OK, well, Charlotte, I think you have our blessing then. OK. Thanks, guys. Okay. Um, our, our next item is an uh, is an item of discussion for NOI 21-18 for 589 595 Jerusalem Road, mm -hmm. which was a planting update. And are you are you giving that update, Charlotte? Or was the applicant Cameron Larson? Uh, hi, Cameron. Thank you, oh. Evening Commission. Okay. Hello. Um, yep, my name is Cameron Larson with Environmental Consulting and Restoration. Um, I also believe that um, the applicant and homeowners on the line too, Marike Bernson, and um, also Brad Holmes from ECR, if you wanted to. Uh, I see Brad Holmes. I don't see Marike yet. Okay. Well, if she, I guess if she does get on, if you if you wouldn't mind sure. you know, putting her on, that'd be great. Okay. Um, Anyways, again, my name is Cameron. I'm here to give the commission an update regarding the restoration work at 589 and 595 Jerusalem Road. Um, just to refresh the commission, this was a coastal bank restoration project that was submitted under an ecological notice of intent. It was approved by the commission um, and an order of conditions was issued back in April. Um, the, improve, the approved project um, included the removal of non-native invasive species on the bank at the property, um, followed up by the reestablishment of a native community 
on that bank in the way of new plantings. Um, so the invasives were removed from that bank over the summer. Um, the dominant invasives were honeysuckle, bittersweet, um, garlic mustard, black locust. Um, and, and at this point, or, or since then, the, the bank's now been planted with a variety of native species um, approved by the plan, um, including cedar and pine saplings, bayberry and myrtle shrubs, and then a variety of herbaceous plants, um, bearberry, goldenrods, switch grasses, um, and such. ECR completed an inspection of the property on October 18th. Uh, happy to confirm that the bank's in, in excellent condition at this point. All the newly planted vegetation is in very good shape. Um, there's no, been no die off at this point. Um, ECR did not observe any new invasive growth on the bank. The applicant and homeowner has been very diligent about the hand removal of new sprouts that have emerged on that bank. Um, there's also been no erosion or destabilization, destabilization of the bank at this point. Um, so overall, it's in, it's in very good shape. Uh, we expect that bank to um, you know, continue to fill in and um, do well through this next growing season. Um, at this point, we're basically in the monitoring phase of the project. So um, we will be monitoring the condition of this bank through next year's growing season. Um, if there is any die off, plant stock will be replaced at that point. Um, we'll also be maintaining and removing any invasive new growth that's on that bank. Um, we're happy to, you know, provide updates to the commission as that goes on. Um, so, you know, again, this is, you know, just a just a time to update the commission. If you if you have any questions, um, be happy to address those at this point. Yeah, and I, I have I have a question. So, is the is the bank of um, all the plantings fully uh, been fully installed now? And so, as you mentioned, it, we, it's just from here and it, it's monitoring the existing. Uh, plantings, et cetera. So is, is everything in, is there anything left that needs to go in? No, there's nothing left that's going to be going in. Um, I will note that um, based on observations um, after the invasives were removed and once planting had begun, um, the plan was, the, some of the plants were um, reduced slightly, including some of the, the golden rods and um, the asters. There was a lot of native growth of asters already on that bank. Um, and then between that and the, the rocky conditions of the bank, um, some of that plant stock was reduced just because it would have overcrowded the bank. So at this point, everything's been installed and we'll be monitoring for any, you know, die off of those, the, the new plants. I know that you, I, I know that you walked into this project uh, a, a little late uh, or have been asked to just to, uh, Basically, there's a there's a long, long history on this project, and uh, I know that you've you've been asked to just basically do the the what I guess is considered a final report here at the end. I just I want to go back to the special orders of conditions on this project, and there was a special order. This this really my comments are more addressed to the applicant, not not so much you, but you're in the hot seat, so you you you're going to be in the line of fire here. So uh, special condition 24 in the order of conditions talks about that um, an update describing then present site conditions and work performed in the work location from the date of issuance to that date shall be provided to the commission at a scheduled public hearing close to, but before the installation of plants as outlined in the fall of 2021. So as I read that special condition, basically to me, what that means is that this meeting uh, that we're having now as part of the update is wonderful, it's great, but it should have occurred prior to any of the final plantings in the fall of 2021. And I know that you weren't involved, probably weren't involved in this earlier on, might not have had to do anything to do with the plantings, et cetera, you're coming in after the fact, but I just, I wanna bring that out as part of a, doesn't appear that the special order of conditions was adhered to by the applicant on this project. I guess I'll just make one brief comment. You're, you're right. You know, I haven't been involved in the, in the entire history of the project, um, but I am aware that uh, a report was submitted to the commission uh, prior to planting the bank, um, submitted around the end of September, uh, I believe, um, towards mid-September anyways, 
Um, it, the report was then rejected by the commission um, a month later. Um, between that point, the applicant had moved forward with the plantings. Their understanding was that the report had been provided. They hadn't heard from the commission um, and the bank needed to be stabilized. So um, with the sole intent of stabilizing that bank, the, the applicant moved forward with the, the native plantings. Yeah. No, I mean, you, you, uh, you're factual to the point that uh, we didn't, we didn't um, uh, deny that application. The application or the final report was done in an unethical manner. So that's the reason that the report was not accepted by the commission. We did see it. We understood it, but it was done in an unethical manner by the applicant uh, engineer at that point in time themselves. So I know again, you just you came in a little late here. Uh, I'm not not faulting you for that. I just wanted to point that out, and I mean, we can move on from that. I just wanted to point that out. Then my comments are more to the applicant and, and not to you uh, or anyone from ECR because I know you came in late here. You're just doing your job. Uh, it, my comments go back to the applicant. Do we have any other uh, comments or concerns? I'd, I'd just like to make up the, uh, or, or mention that there is, a, there is an order of condition that says that um, any uh, native plant, whether planted or volunteers, they need to be maintained and, and cannot be removed. And then invasives will continue to be removed, so. Just want to make sure that the applicant's aware that, that they've uh, undertaken a big uh, task here and they have to keep up with it. Yeah, and, and so if ECR is going to be involved in this project uh, moving forward, I would encourage you to talk to Charlotte and get a copy of this special order of conditions that uh, our chair uh, just cited a couple of those moving forward so that, uh, so that everybody's on the up and up. Well, thank you very much for presenting tonight. We certainly appreciate it. Great. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Commission, and have a good evening. Thank, thank you. you. Great. Um, so our, our next order of business is uh, certificates of completion. Charlotte, I don't know if you want to go. Do you want me to? Well, I'll list the, I'll list them. The, the, the first one is a uh, notice of intent. 18-20 and a stormwater permit 18-29 for 22 Gammons Road. Mm -hmm. um, so I went out to the site um, and all of my site visits and descriptions are all in OneDrive for you guys to look at. I'm not sure if anyone's gotten a chance to read them yet, but I'll just, I'll just summarize the changes that I found that did not look like they were part of the plan. So for 22 Gammons Road, um, they did a lot of additional landscaping um, on the right side of the house along the stone retaining wall in front of the landscape, the existing landscaped island um, and in front of the existing boathouse. Um, I reached out to the landscape architect uh, who is Sean Papish uh, for more information. He actually gave us a full planting list, which is also in OneDrive and confirmed that a lot of these plantings were discussed with the previous agent, uh, Jeff Summers. Um, they added a lot of natives and hardy non-native, non-invasive plants. Um, so there is a full list if anyone has any questions about that. Um, and then for some of the other changes that I noticed, um, one of the changes that uh, the, the, well, the biggest change that I saw, the others are more minor, um, is uh, the P-Stone driveway connection to the existing boathouse um, was uh, taken out. And in place of it, there were granite stepping slabs that were placed um, in front of the boathouse. Um, and there was a granite ramp that uh, replaced like an old broken wooden one. Uh, so instead of connecting the uh, P-Stone driveway all the way up to the uh, garage, or sorry, the boathouse, they um, took that out, left it as grass, and did um, uh, granite stepping stones. Um, and Sean Papish also clarified that he discussed a lot of these changes with Jeff Summers, and Jeff Summers confirmed the changes were minor since the amount of impervious surface was not um, increasing because uh, they decreased it by taking out a lot of the driveway. Um, and so apparently a lot of these changes ha um, were discussed uh, with, with uh, the previous agent. Um, and then some of the other minor changes that I saw were the granite stepping stones were also placed um, 
in front of the or on the side of the walkway that's in front of the house. The walkway was approved, just the granite stepping stones are just an addition. And then there were some um, granite stepping stones around uh, the back of the house uh, where the patio was replaced. Um, and then the last change was there was a granite cobblestone surround that was added to the flagpole in the back of the house. Um, I talked to the engineer about just these minor changes and, uh, you know, they clarified that, um, you know, since they removed a lot of the driveway, they reduced a lot of the impervious area. So the granite stepping slabs were pretty minor and didn't really alter the calculations um, for stormwater management. Um, so those are the changes that I noticed and I just wanted to see if anybody from the commission had any other questions. Uh, or concerns about this project. It'll be um, a certificate of compliance for the um, order conditions and for the stormwater permit. No comments. Okay. Thank you. Okay. No, no concerns. Okay. Um, do you want me to move on to the next one? Yeah, that's uh, the next one is a, uh, uh, well, Tom or Kathy or Chris, did you have any comments or concerns? No, okay. No. The next item is a stormwater permit 19-24 at 11 Great Brewster Trail. Charlotte, did you speak with John Kevinara about this? I did. Uh, I, I actually spoke with Brendan Sullivan, who is the uh, engineer. Um, so they made a handful yeah. of um, changes. Uh, um, so basically, um, the driveway, uh, instead of having it all be uh, crushed gravel, what they did was they have gravel treads and grass strips in between the treads. Um, and so that wasn't a part of the plan, but I noticed in the original proposed um, landscaping plan, it looks like that was one of the drawings. So I don't know um, if that was eventually added to the plan. I didn't really get if that was discussed with the previous agents. Um, the swale in the backyard uh, was not built, but the engineer clarified that it was constructed as the grade was not as deep in the back versus the front. And the runoff just goes over the grass and kind of pools there. And I did see some uh, water pooling. Um, he said it's uh, basically uh, the runoff is kept away from the house. Um, and so that's why they felt that it wasn't needed. Um, and then they added two cobblestone aprons um, on the driveway. One was in front of the garage and one is at the entrance to the driveway. Um, and uh, the engineer did do the recalculated hydrocad uh, numbers, and he said it doesn't um, affect the numbers or, or the original design. Uh, it wasn't altering the peak flow and the volume. Um, uh, so that apparently didn't, didn't change anything. Um, and then last but not least, the owner did confirm that they followed the proposed planting plan, but they want to add more. So I saw a lot of established um, native plants. There was a white pine in the back that was part of the um, original um, uh, landscape plan. They have a lot of hydrangeas, other native plants, um, but they said they wanted to do more in the back of the house. Um, on the left side of the driveway, all those plantings are pretty established, um, but most of the planting work that they want to do is, is on the back of the house um, on the left side. Um, so I didn't know if anybody else had other questions or concerns with the as-built plan. No comments. I had no other comments. No. No. Okay. Um, the next item is approval of order of conditions for previously approved projects. I think I think you have two outstanding. Is that right, Charlotte? Oh, sorry. I had one more certificate of compliance, but well, technically two uh, for okay. the Beechwood projects. Do you want, you want me to? Um, I apologize yeah, for didn't make it onto the agenda. Do you have the number on that one? Sure. It's a stormwater permit 20-03 and stormwater permit 20-04 for 541 and 543 Beechwood Street. Okay. Um, sorry, that might have been a last minute change to the agenda. Um, but basically this one was very simple. Everything pretty much was done. The only changes that I noticed was there was a paved walkway in front of each house entrance with landscaped beds bordering each side of the walkway. Um, and then for 541, the only change uh, other than that that I noticed was the house footprint on the as built and on site looks like it's just a tad smaller than what we approved. Um, it looked like in the back behind the uh, deck space, um, it looked like it, it was supposed to come out a little bit more to meet the deck, but it was a little bit further in. So it was a slightly smaller um, footprint. I asked the applicant to give me any clarification if any of that was discussed. Um, but other than that, that was the only change that I noticed other than the walkway. So how, how large were these walkways? Um, I can 
go back and can look at my pictures, but it was, they're pretty small. Like they were kind of like a short little curve. Um, mm -hmm. uh, my pictures are also in OneDrive if anyone would like me to pull them up. Sure, why don't you real quickly? Okay, sure, give me one sec. Um, but they weren't really long ones. Um, okay. And the original plans had no walkways? Mm-hmm. Get there somehow. Sorry, just pulled it up. So this is 543. So it's like a little, um, oh, okay. little curve, and then they have the landscaping uh, beds around. Um, you know, and then the 541 is just the exact opposite. It's just a mirrored mm -hmm. image of it. It looks beautiful. <laughs> um. But yeah, those are the that was the only change really. And then 541 had a slightly smaller footprint in the back, but okay. everything else seemed to be built as per plan. Okay. Uh, anyone have any questions? No. No, thank you. Okay. Issue, issue your certificates. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys want me to. I technically did one more last minute today, but I don't know if you guys want me to discuss that because I haven't written up a summary. <laughs> What, what is, does it need to go out? What is it real quick? Uh, this is for 26 Little Harbor Road. It's a notice of intent 13-16, um, but I uh, need to confirm if there's a stormwater permit. So I don't know if you guys want me to wait on this one, but um, I didn't see any major changes, um, but they just decided not to do an extension of the patio, uh, the existing patio's brick, and they wanted to do bluestone, but they ended up not doing it. So other than that, we also have a planting report for um, all the plants that were built along the um, the back of the house in the inner buffer zone. So they, we have a report. I think it's from ECR, but I'll confirm that. But I'm happy to discuss at the next meeting too. I just didn't have time to prepare it because I did it at one o'clock today. <laughs> yeah, let's just let's just hold that one off. Then. Okay, sounds good. That's okay. it for certificates of compliance. Okay. Um, do you have any orders of conditions to uh, be approved? No, that was a no. Yep. No, no, no more orders of condition. Um, we took care of the Sawyer Street and the 125 Doan from last time. Okay. Um, do, you, do you have any project updates on, um, well, let's just run through this list. 44 Border Street, have we ever received a engineer's report? No, I need to follow up with the engineer about that. Um, but 44 border kind of ties into one of the updates I had for you guys about um, COVID permit extensions. Do you want me to kind of clarify that? Because I was going to use 44 border as an example. Okay. Um, so there's a document in OneDrive that was sent to me. Um, it clarifies um, how to determine uh, permit extension deadlines based off of now the fact that the state of emergency ended on June 15th. Um, so depending on when the orders of conditions expired, if it expired uh, before the state of emergency ended, what you do is you add the total number of days between um, the, uh, I believe it's the uh, <laughs> when the pandemic first started on March 10th, 2020, and up until the expiration, and you add those number of days after June 15th. So it's a little complicated for that one. The second one is a little bit easier where if the orders of conditions expired after the state of emergency, you add the total amount of the state of emergency, which is 462 days, you add that to um, the um, expiration date. And so for 44 border, for example, the orders of conditions would have technically expired, I believe September 7th, but since it expired after the state of emergency ended, you add 462 days to that date. And I believe that's about like, I think it's like December, uh, late December, 2022. Um, so just wanted to kind of clarify that, but I do have a guidance document that kind of shows like, some examples and kind of clarifies what that is. And I also discussed it with legal counsel as well. Um, so uh, for any projects that were affected by the um, the pandemic, I have a guidance document to help with expiration dates. So, so they're not legally responsible to give us the engineer's report until December of 2022? Oh, I think they still have to give us the report and everything. It's just in terms of, um, you know, if they need to do additional work, because I think they said uh, for 44 borders specifically, they are waiting on some materials that they couldn't order. 
And so they need some of those to arrive. And then they also wanted to do some plantings in the spring. So they do have some stuff to complete before they um, file for um, an eventual certificate of compliance, but they also need to give us the report. And I know the engineer was waiting on a lot of the information uh, before she kind of gave it to us. So I'll follow up with her about that. I believe her name is Deborah Keller. Um, I think she's from Merrill, uh, but I, we still need a report for that. So I'll follow up. And and do you know of um, status on, on the chapter 91 with that property? I do not. Um, okay. I was kind of gonna ask uh, when the final report came in about a lot of those details, because um, I think that kind of ties in. Okay. Um, is there any update on the harbor wall? Is that all complete? And, and not complete? yet, not the bridge, no. So when I inspected it, um, it looks like they did the left side, uh, you know, that's uh, closest to the harbor master's office, um, but they haven't done the top or the right side yet. So unless they just did a lot in the past week, um, I've seen the left side done. Um, but I, I know they said they would be done in a couple months, but that was in September, so I don't know what the delay is. Um, but I'll definitely check on it again, uh, you know, and I kind of, every time I drive by it, I stop and look at it, so. Um. Okay. Um, and and have you, um, 76 Lambert's Lane, have you had an opportunity to get out there yet? Yeah, I did go out, um, talked with the applicant. There are a lot of back and forth conversations and emails that happened, and so he sent me as many as he could find. And so I'm still trying to fish through it and kind of get a storyline here of a timeline of events of what kind of happened and what was discussed and what wasn't discussed. Um, so a lot of this was back and forth with the previous agent. Um, so I definitely need to kind of compile a narrative and a storyline here of, you know, what happened and all those changes and what was kind of discussed versus what wasn't discussed. There were some conversations as well with the interim agent um, about plantings. So a lot of the correspondence I have is about the lighting, the planting, and a few other things. So I'll definitely um, get back to you guys on that. Sorry, I haven't had time to look through them. <laughs> Lots of COC visits to do. And, and I know I know that Dolan Lane, you spoke with Amy and with Jay this week. So yes. I, I don't know that we need an update on that one. I think okay, I was gonna say, I'm happy to share any updates if we want them, but um, a lot's been discussed back and forth with this one. Um, I'll just give you guys a quick update that um, they are getting ready for a building permit. So construction should begin as long as the applicant can find a, you know, someone to do the foundation, but it, it's happening. But uh, we we clarified a lot of stuff um, and I'm happy to go over it or I can send an email or whatever is easier. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I, I read through, you know, mm -hmm. the information you had given yeah. and, and as I as I noted in, in a letter back to you, my, my, my only real concern is the fact that they, uh, when they came before us for the permit, they delineated a, a tree line and said mm -hmm. basically from that tree line back was going to be uh, yeah. wildlife or wild lands easement. And I don't know whether or not they've actually, if that if that tree line is where they show it on the plan or whether they've disturbed that. And that that's my was my only issue. I've been going back and forth on the tree line a lot. Um, Talking with the engineer, it doesn't sound like the uh, the caliper dimensions on the site plan may not have been 100% accurate. Um, that's what Jeff Hassett admitted, that his surveyors may have been off with the dimensions. So I've definitely been looking at the trees a lot. Um, I'm not entirely convinced uh, that the ones on the border were saved. There's a large one that's definitely there, but some of the smaller ones. Um, but everything else beyond that, the 25 foot has not been touched. Um, so it's just a matter of the stuff that was on the border and, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of rocks, large rocks, um, over the, um, you know, that, that was part of the site plan to put like a rock wall, but like, I don't know if the rocks covered any, of any tree stumps and stuff. So it's kind of hard to, um, to look at that, but at least when I look at it, every time I look at it, I see something different. Um, so I'm happy to show pictures and updates and I can send them all to you guys once I'm done typing up my summaries. Um, and I'm definitely happy to circle back about the trees because I'm really going back and forth about that. Every time I go, I see something different. Um, well, I, I mean, the, the only thing I would say is, 
if you can take a measurement or mm -hmm. pace off a measurement from yeah. the road the road to where they show a tree line, I would mm -hmm. be interested to know whether or not they've actually cleared okay. beyond that. Because it yeah. seems to me they've cleared a lot more, but I'm, I could be completely wrong. Yeah, I don't think they've cleared beyond it, but the ones that were on the border of the buffer line, that's what I am suspicious about. <laughs> okay. Well, um, keep, us, keep us posted. Yeah, I'll definitely keep you posted. And I don't, uh, I'm looking at this site very closely. So it's, uh, yeah, it's on my radar. Um, high priority. Um, are there any other updates? Um, that is it for now, unless I'm, is it, and does anyone else have any other questions on other sites? I'm, I wrote up most of my stuff about Dolan Lane. Um, No, I'm just making sure there's no one else. Okay. Um, are there any documents requiring approval or signatures? Um, there are three minutes, three sets of minutes. Um, they're in oh. OneDrive for Kathy, correct me if I'm wrong, 923, 1021, and 114. Unless I have the dates wrong, I apologize. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't get an updated uh, agenda, so I don't know the dates. But um, the ones in OneDrive uh, are nine twenty three, yep. ten twenty one, and eleven four. Okay. I've looked through them. Had no correct. comments. Did anyone else comments? Oh, I made some comments. Um, yes. Thank you, Kathy. Ten twenty one and eleven four. I sent them to Charlotte. Okay. And uh, Angela copies and to you, Chris and yep. Justin, okay. and I think Charlotte. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> revised it and put it in, I believe. Yeah, I can. I think I can add them directly to the document. I know Angela's out. Um, I believe she's out tomorrow, but I'll double check. But okay. yeah, those edits. We, thank you should for we take a, Should we take a quick vote to approve the uh, the minutes with with Kathy's changes for? Uh, September 23rd, 2021, October 21st, 2021, and November 4th, 2021. So moved. Chris, excuse me. Oh. There were the changes that I made were only to the October 21st. Okay. And the November 4th. Okay. Minutes. Thank you for that clarification. Yeah. Uh, having heard a motion to approve, do I have a second? Second. second. Having motion and a second to approve the meeting minutes with Kathy's clarifications for or changes for uh, October 21st and November 4th. Take a roll call vote. Tom Bell. Tom Bell, aye. Kathy Berrigan. Kathy Berrigan, aye. Uh, Jay Pampare. Jay Pampare, aye. Chris McFarland, aye. Uh, the meeting minutes are approved 400. Zero, zero. Does anyone have any uh, 48 hour issues they'd like to bring up? No. No. Nothing. Okay. Well, if, unless unless someone has anything else. Motion to a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Do I have a second? <laughs> Having a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much, everyone. Good night. Good night. night. Happy Thanksgiving. To you Thanks also and to everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thanks.